You know that moment when you can tell that you you tried so hard to make make things line up correctly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you just hear it happen incorrectly. I mean, that's just that's just the theme of, uh, I mean, of our. Friendship. I mean, are we giving away the fact that we're in two different places though? Well, we have to be this week, man. Why don't you tell them why? Well, I mean, it's the week, right? This week, you know, it's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. People are trying. This is the heaviest. I think this is. I think statistically, this is the heaviest heaviest <laughs> like the the most sort of travel traffic mm-hmm, i think so what, what am i trying to freaking yeah, say like here, uh man? like the heaviest travel yeah <laughs> the heaviest travel like what what am i what, you said travel anyway okay so we're traveling just like everybody yeah. else and we're trying something a little new mm-hmm. here and uh taking the show on the road but in different places yeah. right we're literally doing right now we are doing the old school, there's a feud going on, mm. and it is East Coast versus West That's right. Coast. That's right. M- me in, in uh, the East Coast, and Tyler is out west. Back on the West Coast, back in Orange County with the in-laws. But thankfully, because of technology and the simulation that we uh, apparently live in, allows for us to still communicate mm-hmm. despite being on opposite sides of our That's country. That's right. I do feel a little bit like a Benedict Arnold, though, because... I'm still on the West Coast, which is, I mean, the East Coast. Uh, what was I saying? Schedule, time, <laughs> Jesus. mindset. Mindset, yeah. Well, my loyalties you know. lie with the East Coast, basically. Okay. So, like, Easy E. Yeah. Wait, wait. Was he, no, was he, he was West Coast? He was West Coast. I'm not going to, we're not going to get into my uh, hip hop, early hip hop knowledge. Mm. However, I will tell you that I will soon be learned in all things hip hop because I am going to buy my man Uncle Eddie his uh, his hip hop books man ooh yeah the hip hop family tree by yeah dude the <laughs> one and only our friend and yours Ed Pisker just unbelievable yeah man. we got to have him on the show yeah he's awesome <clears throat> dude I got to say something real quick look the past couple episodes have been extremely conceptual like very like heady yeah. we got in the weeds a little bit the, i think for a lot of our listeners and we but, even cut you know, out a lot too holy smokes did we ever yeah. a lot of ums if you know t- you know i've got a whole track here but mm-hmm. i will say on the last episode you know we covered a lot of like serious things man life in general like mm-hmm. conceptually like are we a part of this you know uh Wait a minute. simulation Wait. Are we doing the the intro? Hey, pilgrims and turkeys. Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, That Would Be Rad. A podcast that majors in 80s and 90s nostalgia, comic culture, all things paranormal, and minors in retro video games, tabletop RPGs, pre-internet mysteries, eating the best thing you can find on Thanksgiving Day, and raising our kids to be half as cool as we were back in the 80s. We are your hosts, Woody Brown. And Turkey Tyler. (laughs) What's up, Turkey Tyler? How's it going, man? Uh, Look, man, I want to talk a little bit about my uh, recent trip to New York City, but before I do, I got to say something here. Mm -mm. Every single time I listen to last week's episode like while I was editing it but most specifically listening back on our drive back uh, from the airport Mm -hmm. I laugh my ass off every time I hear you say I mean I'm a pretty good dude (laughs) I don't do a lot of crime dude I mean I don't though well I, I understand I think you know it was just hilarious I don't know why that line like there's a couple others too but I don't know why that yeah. one like just stood out to me and makes me laugh so well, much well I thought you were going to say because I keep saying like instead of nefarious I keep saying nefarious and I'm pretty sure oh. that is not right ladies and gentlemen the hardest part about having a podcast mm-hmm. is hearing yourself God, it's the sound worst. like an idiot <laughs> the worst <laughs> Oh, uh, but the best part is hearing your best friend sound like an idiot because it's <laughs> oh, just yeah. fun to laugh at, right? Yeah, Woody, you also have this like. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> Here we not, go. I'm, we can't even make it. I'm Five not making this just, up. But look, man, just because I made fun of you doesn't mean you have to make fun of you me. You do have this habit. Totally making it I up. I swear like, on my his life, ears I'm are not. small. No, go ahead. you have this habit of like, and it's like maybe once to twice an episode where like you'll have that like puberty moment where you're like. 
And then no, no, no. What happens is like, well, yeah, I mean, sometimes that happens. Or it's all the smoke. it sounds like last time. Yeah, right. But it did sound like that. That's why mm-hmm. I said it last time. I was like coughing my brains out. Mm-hmm. My, my voice was all nasty. I didn't do my vocal warm ups like, you know. Oh, that's it. Like that's I've been it. taught. Yeah, the honey you know? and the tea. Yeah. Well, now that we got that out of the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so New York City, man. Mm-hmm. I got to say, you know, it's been, I think, dude, since, yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I'm pretty sure it's been since we were there with our band, you know, man, I don't even know how many years now, 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, since I've been in New York. Oh, I thought you were going to say since we've been, yeah. Yeah, no, no, since I've been in New York City. that It's been that long. Uh, we, my, no. my wife and I, she surprised me actually with a trip to New York City Comic Con pre-COVID, so... Mm-hmm. Like three or like twenty eighteen, yeah, three twenty seventeen. Because Stanley was still rocking. Uh, was he heart still beating? Is that that's the one that you got the picture with? No, or was that before? No, that was a long. That time was ago. at like Wizard Con here in Atlanta, which was God. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, New York City's awesome. It was super fast. So, you know. I mean, that's the thing, dude. And so the the reason I went was because my son, since he was no joke, since he was two years old, has wanted to go to New York City, mm-hmm. and you know became super obsessed with the Ghostbusters when he was around three. Oh, yeah. I mean, just super obsessed. I mean, he would make his pre-K teachers or his, like, preschool teachers, like, draw the Ghostbusters symbol. And then he would kind of, like, tape it to the side of his arm. Like, whatever he was wearing, <laughs> he would just, like, tape it. And that, like, every single day, you know? And so the the elementary – or the, uh, the preschool teachers got kind of wise to it. And so what they would do is they would just print out a bunch of logos for this kid oh. and then just – wait for him to say it and they'd be like oh yeah no problem and they'd have like the official one he'd be like ah and he'd like with one of my old backpacks he turned it into his like proton proton pack pack and like would just it was just the best man everything was ghostbusters oh well Well, even halloween yeah we were as a family we were ghostbusters that year Mm -hmm. and uh and then of course like this year too so you know we just can't can't escape it now my youngest is also obsessed but i'll be damned if i'm taking a (laughs) five-year-old To New York City for a couple of reasons. Yeah. One, not going to appreciate it like they should. Two, even though the public transit is just outstanding, there's still a lot of walking, mm-hmm. and she would have been complaining the entire time. Which means you would have been carrying her the entire time. Because one hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm just not. It sucks. No. Yeah. And so I've I've wanted to take him to New York forever, but like I said just now, I just kind of refused until he was old enough to like really appreciate it, mm-hmm. and so. You know, I don't know, the past couple months or so, I've been like, you know, I really want to do something sort of father and son with him. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, especially just like, you know, of course, COVID and and, um, just travel in general, just (laughs) hopping up to New York City just wasn't even in my radar, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And anyways, we ended up getting like a really, really awesome deal. And so I surprised him with it. And my gosh, it was amazing. That was a very quick trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, we landed on a Saturday morning and left on a Monday night. And so it was just like a weekend trip and we tried to fit it all in. But like I said, my son is in still huge Ghostbusters fan. So obviously, after we deplaned, caught a cab from JFK to our hotel. Mm-hmm. Where do you think the first place we went to was? The old firehouse. The Ghostbusters firehouse, man. Mm-hmm. And man, I got to say, it's like so out of the dozens of times that just you and I have been in New York City together, mm-hmm. how in the world did we never yeah. go see this thing? Yeah. How was it not? I mean, I didn't even think about it back then. Yeah, any of the, anytime we've talked about this, I've, I've asked myself the same thing. I, I guess, like, mentally I just thought, like, well, maybe it doesn't, like, exist Maybe anymore. it was just, like, a soundstage or something. Yeah. I, mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. Well, it's I, weird. I mean, I, I know mean, they, like, they definitely, you know, filmed in New York because that was, like, such mm-hmm. a kind of an integral part of the movie. But like, yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've never even like thought of it really when we've been up there. It's just insane that we never saw mm-hmm. it. But the good news is I finally have. And as we're like walking up, man, because it's on the corner of Northmore Street and um, Varick Street, Brooke, which is... Brooklyn Woody uh, B, knowing those directions. It's in, yeah. It's out in Tribeca. Mm-hmm. And as you walk, as we walked up, we were kind of coming to the like the, the back left corner of it. You know, I'm looking down at my navigation wherever I'm like, it's coming up. And dude, as soon as you see it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's so surreal, man. Like mm. this, this is it. It's just incredible, man. And you know, I found out a lot about it. So it's still an operating firehouse, uh, home of the hook and ladder company eight. Mm. And man, 
kind of pretty interesting. Again, like I wanted to know about the history of this place. So the actual building itself has been in service for more than 100 years, even before the New York Fire Department was like established. Hmm. And so it was actually part of the Metropolitan Fire Department. And another interesting fact is that members of the Hook and Ladder Company 8 were some of the first responders on 9-11. Wow. Um, Mm. What's interesting, too, is that I didn't even think about that, you know, when we initially got there, but it's really, really close to ground zero. Mm. And um, we kind of stayed pretty close in that. We we stayed in Chinatown, which, you know, I had never stayed in a hotel in in, uh, or near Chinatown. But I got to tell you, man, if if I'm if I'm giving out, if I'm just throwing out like jewels, gems, Mm. like if I'm if I'm giving you like the lasagna of the conversation. Staying in Chinatown was awesome. Mm -hmm. It's quieter, man. It wasn't as, you know, all night, you know, horns honking. It was super quiet. Mm -hmm. We had an awesome view of the Manhattan Bridge. We were only a couple blocks away from the Brooklyn Bridge. We were where we could kind of easily shoot over to the World Trade Center, shoot over to where the ferries pick you up to go um, to see the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And, and then, of course, head straight uptown to Cinder Park and, and all the other things. But it was just incredible, man. We saw, like, so much. We, we just jammed it in there, you know, mm-hmm. in fact. And I had to, like, remind myself, like, you know, I'm kind of tired, but I'm still moving. I'm still mm-hmm. feeling fine. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, you know you, you know how it is as a dad. Like, you can tell when your kids are getting cranky. They're like, yeah. well, you know, they're either tired mm-hmm. or hungry mm-hmm. or both, right? So I had to kind of check in with them and stuff. But a couple of things that we found out about the Ghostbusters while we were there, because another stop that he wanted to make was to go to the New York public library that, you know, Vinkman and mm-hmm. well, first that's where the ghost lady is obviously yep. in the first one. Uh, and there's those two lion statues in the front, those nice like yeah. marble kind of stoned steps um, that lead up to the entrance or whatever. It's very iconic pigeons flying off, which pigeons were all over there. Oh, it was yeah. so cool. It, it just like seemed like you're in the movie. Well, he wanted to go inside, and um, I was like, absolutely. Once you get inside, you find out pretty quickly that oh, they actually filmed the interior scenes <laughs> in L.A. at really? the L.A. Public Library. So, Dude, um, I'll have to go. Maybe yeah, I can, you have to, man. Yeah. There is one scene that they, I think, filmed in there, but we couldn't get into that section of the library without like making a reservation. It was like really intense, like super quiet. This area is for research only, mm-hmm. like all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But they had this collection down on the main floor that had, I mean, dude, just crazy, crazy stuff. Like the original, one of the original copies before it was like ratified and edited of the U.S. Constitution, man, the Bill of Rights. Wow. A letter for uh, the farewell letter from George Washington, mm. ben, you know, handwritten letters about Ben Franklin. Oh, uh, the you know, my kids are super into Mary Poppins mm-hmm. and the author's like original actual umbrella that she used as inspiration for Mary Poppins' umbrella. Wow. The original like Winnie the Pooh dolls and stuff, mm. a hand drawn picture that. Uh, Jack Kerouac made for his concept for the cover of On the Road. Now that's amazing. Which, you know, yeah, dude. Yeah. Super significant for you and I. Yeah, forget George Washington. Um, Give me some Kerouac. <laughs> <laughs> Just a really, really cool stuff, man. I mean, like, this really cool, like, poster of Houdini, like the original poster. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking and about. And a... Uh, like, like, are you saying, like, an original, like, print or the original, like, painting that was the poster? Yeah, it may have been a painting that was the po- I'm not sure it's the it's the one where it's like Harry Handcuff Houdini mm-hmm. the jailbreaker yeah and uh underneath that is a signed letter from the St. Louis Police Department the chief of police who is certifying that he actually like l- cuffed just, him. I gotta read this out he says we the undersigned do hereby certify that we stripped Harry Houdini stark naked sealing up his mouth with plaster and handcuffed and leg shackled him, Very. chaining his hands to his feet. And he successfully extricated himself from everything locked upon him using the department's irons. This being done in the office of the chief of detectives where he was left alone with absolutely no change at all hmm. or no chance of uh, escape. Man, that's so, fascinating. I love him. Yes. He's, he's a man. Oh man. So cool. He was either born or died on Halloween. Which is pretty interesting. It is. And there's like some other like sort of mystical stuff that surrounds him, correct? Oh, yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, when he... After these messages, we'll be right back. 
Guests of the new celebrity Ding Dang Dong stay at the world-renowned Plaza Hotel, New York's most exciting hotel experience. For reservations, call toll-free 1-800-759-3000. I'll do just that. America's future can be determined by our dreams and our visions. It was very intense broad For over 200 years, there have been reports of giant man-like creatures. From another dimension, another world, I don't know. The most intriguing mystery on the North American continent. Hey, this is Bryce Johnson from the Bigfoot Collectors Club, and you're listening to Tyler and Woody on That Would Be Rad, because that is rad. Uh, He was extremely close with his mom, and uh, he kind of went, basically it was around the time of like the spiritualist movement. So like, Mm. you know, there were a lot of like seances and sort of this like high society folks of like in like metropolitan cities would have like you know, like the Fox sisters would do like seances and, and, uh, like spirit photography was like a real big thing. And so he basically, it started out with like him wanting to really like communicate with his mom. And so he would like sit in these like seances. He would like sneak in wearing like disguises and stuff. Mm. And then once he figured, because he was like a master of basically a magician. So he knew all these like little tricks. He would, go in on these seances and then like totally expose them if he once he saw that like you know you know because they yeah they would they would like cut the lights out and you would feel like banging or like whatever he would he would be the first to like be like nope that's exactly this 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 Mm. and so Mm. like he he was kind of hated by a lot of those you know the that crap yeah the big names of like in the spiritualist movement because he was like totally calling them out but he but he started because he truly wanted to communicate with his mom Wow. After she died, yeah, pretty cool. Mm. What what about the? Uh, did you go to your old haunt, the uh, Sabaro? Sabaro <laughs> uh, office reference. Oh yeah. Um, uh, hey, real quick, no, dude. We b- before we move on. Sorry, are you saying that the the main floor of the library and the basement scenes from Ghostbusters are those both in L.A.? I think the basement scene is in L.A. I, I forget when we were there. You know, like y- you've got dude and. and uh, it's so funny because we're just not used to it as as Georgians, you know. I'm, I'll never get used to it. You go up there, it's freezing cold outside. Yeah. It's super windy. Mm-hmm. So we've got everything on, right? You know, like hat, gloves, jacket. The second you step into the library, or any building, just burning up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like having to do all this kind of stuff, make sure that my son doesn't get lost mm-hmm. or that he doesn't just like, you know, get in trouble for slipping his mat, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of getting antsy, you know, because he wants to see stuff. And it's like, I've got to do all that. And at the same time, look up, hey, where, what are the scenes, you know? And so I just remember seeing that the, I think the basement with the library lady was in LA mm-hmm. and most of the interior scenes. I think there is one section when they are asking the lady, like once she is, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. she's like laying on the table or whatever. I think that part was filmed in New York. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to play by play necessarily, but some of the cool things that we got to do, obviously, we got to see the Statue of Liberty. It was an incredible experience riding back and, and seeing the New York City skyline and and the and the One World Trade Center and yeah. like the Statue of Liberty and, and all this. And then as we're docking, you know, you, you walk down, you know, two levels to get to the, the main level of the of the ferry. And you're kind of surrounded by a couple hundred people, you know, and it's it's tight and we're, you know, everybody's kind of getting, we're ready to, to kind of get off the boat. But for whatever reason, all of a sudden, there must have been a lot of wind and the <laughs> the water got extremely choppy. Uh-oh. So much so that the ferry slams into the dock, mm. like sideways. Boom. Dude, people... People fall over. <laughs> Women are screaming. Dude, I'm not even... This is the moment where I was like... I mean, I'm like, okay, I remember that they said, this is where the life jackets are. I located in like the matter of like 15 seconds. I already know where the kids' yeah. life jackets are because that's all, you know, that's what I'm going to get. It's like a checklist. Put it like... around Woodrow. Right, yeah. And the boat is rocking so freaking steep and hard, dude, that like literally I'm thinking... Dude, am I tra- are we this trapped in here? Is this thing going to capsize? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how hard to the left and hard to the right. And then it would just like slam and people were like screaming. Mm-hmm. 
and here I am in the middle of, you know, a couple hundred people. They're like, I don't, I've got nowhere to go, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, so then I typed in a cheat code mm. because we're in the matrix. Yeah, I was about to say. And everything was fine. Yeah, you the simulated <laughs> No, but it finally kind of like chilled out and we got off that boat. Both Woodrow and I were like, whew, man, that was, uh, that was an intense way to end that. Not uh, cool, Dad. You know, visit. But, you know, other than that, the, the trip to the, to the statue was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, Something about those ferries, by the way, are like, I can think several of like the coldest moments of my life. Like, I don't, mm. I can never remember like riding those kind of ferries in like the summer or when it's nice. It's always in like the dead of winter. The yeah. wind's blowing well, so hard and it's just miserable. Yeah, man. The first time I ever went to New York City, it was mm -hmm. like April. You know, like mid-April. Mm -hmm. I remember just like being kind of taken aback how cold it was. And it's like, dude, it's spring mm -hmm. in Georgia. Yeah. You know, things yeah. are green. There's, and there's like piles of snow in New York. Yeah. Did you find any we, cool we, knockoffs in Chinatown? No, but we did eat at a couple of really, really awesome places. This ice cream place in Chinatown where they had durian flavored ice cream. I made Woodrow <sighs> try it. He was disgusted. Yeah. But that's the flavor I chose for my... Uh, Scoop Gross. ice cream. It was delicious, man. Guys out um, there, if you've never tried durian fruit, it is, it's, it's the best. It's basically imagine, which by the way, onions are my least favorite food of all time. So it doesn't even taste like it. So it, it smells and you tastes like You know what like I found onions. out, dude? What? No, go ahead. You tell your version of what you, what durian tastes like to you. Okay. Have we had this conversation on the show No, before? not on the air, I don't think. Mm. Here goes the Matrix, deja vu. <laughs> um, no, it, to me, it tastes just like like onion, but it like texturally, it's this like sort of like creamy like yogurt, but it's also sort of like has like strands or like mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. like like fibrous almost mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. It it's the it's like maybe the worst possible texture combined with the worst possible taste mm -hmm. and the worst smell. All combined mm -hmm. into, oh, yeah. into one fruit. Yeah. yeah. In in certain areas, in Singapore, for example, it's illegal to have it because yeah, it's awful. How far and the smell can travel forever. Now, I'll tell you, I give you your chance. Now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Get in there. I understand completely like the texture thing. If you're a texture person mm -hmm. eating the actual fruit, now we're talking about I had the I had ice cream that was flavored, you know, with it. So that's mm -hmm. different. But if you're talking about the fruit itself and you're a texture kind of person, mm -hmm. one hundred percent this would not be good for you because yeah. like Tyler described, it's kind of like, it's a fleshy fruit, but it's got like these kind of like st stringy strands in there. And then also like a goopy sort of fruit, I, you know, I'm not doing well in terms of selling it in terms of it's, 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 uh, it's really being appetizing, but like, but unlike in terms any of the other flavor, fruit. what I've found out and, and it's, it, you know, it's the exterior of the fruit is extremely hard, spiky yeah. and it grows on trees mm -hmm. and, and the exterior is so hard that, you know, they say like, don't walk under a durian tree because if the, if the fruit falls, mm -hmm. it could kill you. Yeah. Um, are, are they heavy? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, relatively like heavy. Like a cannonball. <laughs> yeah. A spiky cannonball. Oh, okay, cool. Which, Which by the way. Is, is what I used for my spiritual weapon boom. in the last D&D campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once again, we're starting to talk about D&D &D and people are like, here we go. Click. But anyway, what I found out about durian is... There is a genetic disposition hmm. to kind of taste it in a certain way. So literally, it's not just an opinion thing that's divided like 50-50. Based on the way that your, I think, taste buds are developed or whatever, you taste it in a certain way, and I taste it in a certain way. What? Because whenever I taste it, yeah, it's just like cilantro. Whenever I taste it, dude, it tastes, it's like one of the best flavors ever. And I don't know, dude, it Weird. truly... I don't know if it just, it's because it reminds me when I was a kid yeah. and I lived overseas. Nostalgia. And I just like taste it. But I don't think so, dude, because I thought maybe that would be the case. But then I'm like, well, I'll just, you know, try this ice cream. Mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of person that's going to force myself to eat something disgusting if it sucks. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just going to be like, yeah, oh, of man, I wasted that money. I'm not going to do it in front of these people because that would be rude. I understand customs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Which, b real quick, by the way, did, was it New York that I found out that there were, onions in my euro and i smashed them smashed that whole thing that, i think that i want to say that was, was it well, me or was maybe, it dude boo -boo. i think it was you and then but that was the same night that boo boo gotten it was his turn to the pay the taxi mm -hmm. 
And we all just like got out. <laughs> Meanwhile, we knew that, and this is like day, like maybe 20 of the East Coast tour. Mm -hmm. And we knew that he was like out of money day two of the East Coast oh, tour. Yeah. And so we're just like, dude, sorry, it's your turn. We just haul ass out of the cab. And he's just like, yeah, we just hear this like yelling and stuff. And he's just got like, he's walking out of this thing, like chains just dropping on the <laughs> ground like a damn. And we're just like laughing our butts off, you know. Yeah, we'll go over there and we'll pay it is the thing. But you know, like this guy, we gotta try to we're trying to teach, teach some responsibility yeah. Yeah. here. And then he's yelling at the cabbie, the cabbie's yelling at him, Booby like kicks the cab. Slams or the door, kicks uh, the cab door. door. Yeah. And the guy just like drives off. So yeah. anyway. Anywho. So back back to Dury. Yeah. Okay. It it is very distinct, but like uh cilantro, I found out that, you know, similarly to that anyway there is like this genetic sort of disposition about how it smells even and how it tastes to you. So like cilantro, I I love it as, as a, um, a means to like season stuff and flavor things. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. Some people like my mom, dude, she can't even be in the same room as it. To her, it smells like body odor and just like hate. Really? It. Yeah. So like, huh. anyway, if you want to go down that rabbit trail about, that yeah that's pretty cool you should because it's super interesting yeah i i actually it, it's weird i don't i don't have like that big of a sort of reaction to it but it is one of those things going back to like the texture that like i'm fine you know taking like a little bite of it or whatever like flavor's fine texture's fine but to me it kind of like it's sort of so powerful that it sort of uh i don't know it takes away from like whatever dish you're you know, what's that cilantro? Yeah, cilantro. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know how. Like, look, we did a lot, but some of the some of the other highlights that we hit were, of course, you know, we had to get a New York City bagel, mm -hmm. so we went to this place, kind of a couple blocks away from where we were staying, called Casars, and it was oh, yeah. classic, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, we went and visited the Museum of Natural History, which I also can't believe I've never been there because oh, that's like I've the night at the museum, times, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's amazing. Yeah. We had a New York City hot dog in Central Park. Ooh, yeah. You know, just like some of the things I wanted to I wanted to show the young lad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, New York treated us well, man. Wow. It was uh it was amazing. We went and of course, kind of lastly to kind of uh wrap up the uh <laughs> the play-by-play -play mm -hmm. here. We went and uh visited Midtown Comics mm. again. Well, t well, tell them Tell them like. Well, here's the thing. I wanted to go to. I wanted to go to. Yeah. Everybody's got to see Times Square. Yes, it's a tourist trap. Yes, it's kind of hokey or whatever. Mm -hmm. But dude, my son's nine. You know, like you get, you have to experience that. And even though it's you know fun during the day to see it, to me, Times Square is best at night. Oh right? yeah. So we get there, and you know he's kind of like looking around and he's amazed and stuff and he's like yeah cool, and he's like hey didn't. Yeah, but wasn't there like a cool comic shop around here? So, and I'm like, yeah, but don't you want to go down here to this area that's like, you know, the super famous, like bunch of big screens mm -hmm. and everything? He's like, he's like, nah, <laughs> comic shop. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So we looked it up and it happened to be Midtown. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, and in fact, like right where we were, we were just right there. We were like almost basically right across the street from it. Yeah. And so, dude, this place for listeners, if you've never been to this comic shop and you're a fan of comics, mm -hmm. Boy, this place is amazing. Yeah. So you walk up, you see it. It's like two stories, but it's on floors two and three of this building, yeah. right? So the lower level. Like tiny, narrow really, staircase. It's a super narrow staircase that just leads up to that second level, mm -hmm. which is the first level of this shop. Mm -hmm. You go in, and I'll, and I'll share a picture on the, uh, you know, on our Instagram page because it's just like, it's incredible. The wall yeah. of issues yeah. is just seemingly forever. They have... Really, really cool stuff. It's just incredible. Well, and I think I think there's two locations, but I th yeah. I think that one is like the original. So yep. that's the one that you definitely. It's good that you guys got to go to that one. Yeah, man, it was so cool. Yeah. And so like he he's been wanting. It's not called Flashpoint. What is it called? It's the Batman and Fortnite sort of mashup or whatever. Oh, zero something. Zero or no, point, Final I Crisis. Think. I think it's zero point. Yeah, maybe that's right. Anyway, he got the collected issue of that hard copy. Mm. And, Which, by uh, the way, the, the I think that's the one. the The artist is actually pretty. Um, dude, it's pretty amazing. cool. Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely really, really, for really kids, good art, but like or model. Yeah, but kids. not. It's not. It's not 
Not like little kids. It's, I mean, like yeah, it's like you know nine to Fortnite thirteen. Kids. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's and it's super awesome, man. And it comes when you buy that version. Uh, it comes with downloadable Fortnite skins of Batman oh. and like all kinds of different stuff, which is really which cool. is is so he he's huge into super Fortnite? Into it, yeah. yeah, super into it. Yeah, like I totally agree that Times Square is definitely like, you know, it is like a sort of a typical thing. Like, oh, they gotta go see Times Square, and like actual New Yorkers, I think, are just kind of like over it. Um, yeah, they avoid it probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I will say there is something especially going for that first time that like it's that like surreal feeling that you get when you see like the Hollywood sign where you're like mm, mm-hmm. I've seen this my whole life in so many movies everything. So many yeah. movies, my favorite movies. And then it's so weird, like, just being there. Like, there is something yeah. kind of magical about it. Absolutely, man. That's kinda of how New York is in yeah, general, right? I, I mean, like, you know, it's in so many of the 80s movies mm-hmm. that we love. Even just it's, like riding the subway feels. Oh, yeah, man. You know. You just feel like you're a part of something just awesome. Yeah. You know. And, and you know, it, it, it just takes you back. Another funny thing. Talk about synchronicity, dude. Mm-hmm. We're looking for a, a pizza place that's like close by and, you know, best New York pizza. And I find this place. And I see closed. this like, article. <laughs> yeah, right. I see this article. And as we're like, I think we were riding on the subway. I'm just kind of like reading it. And I'm like, man, this place sounds incredible. And so it's this place called Scars Mm -hmm. Pizza. And the story about it is just, I mean, frankly, dude, it's just badass. It's like this small, very, very uh, simplistic. You know, they've got these like really, really cool like cocktails. You know, if you go there with someone that's older than nine. Mm -hmm. So as we were waiting to get our pizza, my son's, you know, I just, it, it was one of those moments where I was like, dude, I have to take a picture of this moment because it's just, all things mm-hmm. combined, it's just incredible. I'm sitting here with my son. He's reading a comic. Yeah. I've got a nice cold Stella from the draft. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on this pizza and like Biggie Smalls is playing on the speakers. Nice. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was just it was just super cool. And then you can tell the rest, but I text you. I was like, hey man, I'm at this cool place. You know, check it out. This is happening, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, bro, we've been there. <laughs> yeah. What? I was like, and then, are there dude, booths behind you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, like, hit me like a ton of bricks. I, I, I remembered everything immediately. We had been there. Yeah. Now, I don't remember the circumstances. I think this was, was this when we played with the Damn Wells or? <sighs> I, see, I can't remember what show it was. I can't remember if it was that or if it was the showcase thing in the basement, which was terrible but man but it was one of the two and it was one of those where we didn't have a guide like we didn't have anybody showing us where to go and i think we just happened to just like pop in for beers like before the show just to kind of like loosen up and and all that Mm -hmm. but what's funny is as soon as you sent that picture i immediately i immediately could tell just because just from like the lighting yeah it's like that weird orange glow kind of thing and i was like a lot of like 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 neon and it looks like something from like an early 80s pizzeria type booths Mm -hmm. and like the lampshades are like that like old like glass and brass yeah sort of you know Mm -hmm. like an old school pizza hut i was about to say that yeah yeah man and and it it was just awesome everybody there was super friendly and super cool so all in all man it was an incredible trip um it it was just it was great to be back in new york yeah just a couple knock around guys i was hey I was back in the old neighborhood, man. I said, hey, I'm staying on the corner of Pike and Injury. God Can you help you. me out? God bless you. And, and, and the caddy said, yeah, man, I, I, I got you. It's a flat rate from JFK. And I said, hey, look, man, I got my son here. You see him? He's, he's, a couple guys old. he's never been to the old neighborhood. He's never been Cut to the old neighborhood. Break. And he said, he said, hey, what do you mean old neighborhood? I said, take me to Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. Definitely a lot of memories. Yeah, a little... Uh, little big cat he'll never forget it hey man for sure Pretty awesome well you know what guys we we're kind of doing this episode all of our podcast brethren uh a lot of shows are taken off for the holidays but we just thought you know we don't want to like leave you guys hanging and uh just not do anything so you know woody and i haven't we both kind of been on the go my my daughter's been uh having her soccer like championships and finals and all that so I've been doing that. Woody's been in New York. Now I'm out in mm-hmm. California for the holidays. So we figured we we would just record it, and uh, we hope yeah. you guys enjoyed us rambling on and 
and Woody giving us a play-by-play of his trip. Well, you know, sometimes you got to do that. Mm-hmm. We also wanted to take the opportunity to say we hope that each and every one of you mm-hmm. have an amazing and happy Thanksgiving, and you get to spend it with family, friends, or the people that you you know care about and love the most. So, I mean, to me, that's my favorite. This begins some of my favorite times of the year as well, which is you know being around family and, and Thanksgiving and, and, and Christmas and. In the holidays in general. so mm-hmm. I was going to spring this on you later, but I'll just go ahead and do it now. Something that I'm very f- thankful if for. If you say soulmates again, dude. I'm, I'm not getting say, into the on. soulmate thing. I've been beat up about that, and I'm I'm still sticking <laughs> with it. You could be my mother dog. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, brother. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you too, bro. Uh, I'm thankful for you, bro. I'm You're thankful not for nothing you. nothing on me. You tried. You, I said it first. No, I'm no. I'm thankful for you. I haven't even finished because you interrupted me like you always do. <clears throat> I'm thankful for a package that I got in the mail. Okay, okay. By our dear friend and listener, Clay. My God. Nobody ever sent, like, I'm, okay. Um, I need to start sharing my address, I guess, because nobody ever sends me anything, and you never, ever, I don't Well, because you always give you. my address because you don't want a bomb showing up at your door. So Okay, go ahead. Uh, anyway... I look on my front doorstep, and there's a big box. It says Tyler. I'm like, what is going on here? Open the box. Here's a letter. Tyler and Woody, here are a few of my my extra comics that need a new home. Feel free to divvy them up or trade them or do with them whatever you see fit. You'll have to fight over the heavy metals, but I think the rest will be easy to divide. I've included the controversial burn Superman Issues that old John probably stole from watching Bad Influence one too many times. Enjoy, Clay. Uh, So I just wanted to tell you and to show my appreciation and thanks. Thank you, Clay, for sending me this giant box of comics and heavy metal issues. And uh, yeah, I can't wait till you get one, Woody. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, interesting. You should have said maybe, you know, thanks for saying it to us. But, you know, apparently that's not... uh, well, that's not the case, but I mean, this is also a good time to say, you know, how thankful we are, even though we do it every show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thankful. I mean, look, like the other day, um, don't somebody, are you gonna cry? No, 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 I'm not for Clint. Oh, I felt it coming. So New York. I am, hey, dude, in case you were one listener, in case you were wondering, I am Queens Boulevard. Mm-hmm. No, 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 what I was gonna say is, you know, the other day, I was like sitting in New York. I, I see that somebody, and by the way, I, I stayed off of like social media and stuff just so I could like you know really be in the middle yeah. with my son, which was important to me. Mm-hmm. But um, I got this notification, and I couldn't ignore it because it was like, guys, really love the show, and you know, it, it, it's just one of those things that it, it doesn't ever get by us when people say how much they enjoyed any number of our of our episodes, or just take the time out of their day to kind of let us know. Uh, their thoughts about it or you know some details that they experienced about whatever that topic was Mm -hmm. and it just man it just it's one of those things that continues to blow my mind you know we're just two best friends who created a podcast because Mm -hmm. we wanted to really ultimately have a reason to hang out even more (laughs) you know yeah especially like when it kind of started it was like kind of still pandemic-y and stuff Mm -hmm. and so we wanted to just have an excuse to to hang out well Uh, well and and for posterity's sake to for sure give our kids something to listen to absolutely man and so for us to just kind of create this from scratch and then have people that we've never met all around the world Mm -hmm. take the time to to reach out to us and say that they enjoy it is just the best so since it's thanksgiving i just want to say i'm thankful or we are thankful for each and every one of you real quick also thanks julie like i said thanks clay uh, thanks, Dustin Downey, or Foosh to Thunder. Uh, you're my boy, and he is totally my hookup on <laughs> Batman figures. So I am incredibly thankful. And one of these days, Woody, you may get something too. So I mean, nobody sends me anything, guys. <laughs> you know? No, we'll def- we definitely will uh, divvy up these comics because they're pretty awesome, mm. especially the heavy metals. That's going to be tough because there's some cool mm. Mobius stuff in there. Well, you know. We can be found on Instagram. Feel free to shoot us more long form messages over at that would be radpod at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, like we said from the top, from our families to yours, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for being part of our extended that would be rad family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like we always say, we love you, we appreciate you, 
And as always, happy Thanksgiving and be rad. That's the way it same we immediately are on like the same wavelength yeah if we could only just you know just click the record button channel it. at the same you usually same I, I thought you always waited on Never. that you go three two one click click yeah that's when i click click on the button not at all i said three two one click and then i hear you go <laughs> <laughs> okay um but okay oh be, okay that's what we're saying yeah so the next okay, one okay go. good Look, Shut I don't up. want to spend time. Just fucking go. Something. Just go. I already know about. Get in there. Logistics issue. No, we're not. Welcome back to that. Would be rad.